Hey guys, I'm Jesse Neeland. Um, this is in response to, I did a bunch of Instagram stories yesterday and I got an outpouring, dozens and dozens of women um, who shared back with me that this was really important and they wanted a YouTube video about it so that they could reference it because Instagram stories disappear. So um, this is about coercion and coercion, we think of more like the legal definition of coercion um, is, you know, when a guy tries to get a girl to do something she doesn't want to do, pressures her, convinces her to go further than she wants to go. And legally, it's kind of a messy topic um, as to whether or not that can constitute sexual assault or rape if she technically consented but was coerced into it. Um, and I just finished the book Girls and Sex by Peggy Orenstein. And it's awesome. I highly recommend it if you have daughters or are interested in this kind of a topic. Um, but basically the idea that um, we are taught that it's our job as women to resist. Um, and as girls, as we're growing up, especially as teenagers, as we're sexually experimenting and all that, um, we're taught that it's our job to resist the advances of boys and men. And that their job is to pressure us to try to get us to do stuff, and our job is to resist. That that's the dynamic that, that our culture has set up for us. Um, the problem with that is that we are also taught as girls and women to, for our entire lives, be accommodating, to be nice, to be polite, to not hurt people's feelings, to not cause conflict. And so nowhere do we learn the skills required um, to all of a sudden when we get in a situation in the bedroom or, you know, at a party to just hit the brakes and go, hey, no, like, I, I'm not okay with this after all, I changed my mind. Um, and so to assume that girls should be doing that, that we should have these skills of self-assertion and self-advocacy that should just come out of nowhere in the moment uh, that, that coercion happens is crazy. That's an insane expectation and it's not working because every friggin' woman that I know has been coerced, has experienced pressure. Um, a lot of them wrote back to me that 100% of their sexual encounters um, across their entire lifetime have included pressure and coercion. And then we wonder, we wonder why we struggle to feel so, we struggle to feel um, pleasure in bed. We struggle to feel sensation. We struggle to be really turned on because we weren't bought in. Coercion is we do a favor, you know, or we we do something to get out of conflict. We do something because we feel like we should, or at this point it would we'd feel guilty not to. Um, and that is not the same thing at all to being really turned on and really wanting to do something. And so the conversation around consent is, you know, it, it should be enthusiastic and um, explicit, but then what if you say, mm, no, I'm not really into it, and then the person, your partner, keeps going, well, come on, I mean, just like this, what we'll think about that, I mean, why you're here, I, ugh, I feel like blue balls, like, you know, all those different things. Um, it can be whiny, it can be pleaty, it can be really nice, it can be very flattering. It can be like, oh, but you're so sexy, I can't help myself. You know, it can be all of these different things. That's all coercion. That is all pressuring someone to do something she doesn't want to do. And if she says yes, she's probably going to feel really yucky about it afterwards, or at least confused or conflicted, and certainly not have that really deliciously turned on experience that women are desperately craving and wondering why they can't have. Um, so a few things to talk about here are that we, as girls, are taught to be nice to be pretty, to make other people comfortable, and that other people's experience of us is more important than our own experience of ourselves. So you better believe we find ourselves in situations where we were just being nice, we were just being polite, and now it's, ooh, it's getting like a little awkward. Um, but oddly, it's not awkward for the guy if you say, mm, if you pressure me anymore, you're like walking into sexual coercion territory. He doesn't feel awkward. He feels mad. You know, his feelings are hurt. And then, ooh, it goes right back to the girl. And she's like, oh, okay, I shouldn't hurt his feelings. Um, I have to make this right. You know, I have to apologize. I shouldn't have said that. So it's always, always on us. The established dynamic between men and women, especially when we're younger, um, is that it's his role to push and it's our role to resist. But if we get mad at the way he's pushing or if we're upset about that or we stand our ground or whatever, um, it's not like they just go, oh, well, God, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize that you didn't want to. I, you said you didn't want to and I didn't realize. My bad. No, 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 no. It gets dark sometimes. It's not like necessarily scary, although it absolutely can be. And I have experienced and most women have experienced moments where you were afraid to say no. Um, but a lot of times it's not scary in that way. You're not afraid of physical harm. You're just afraid of conflict, of what will happen if you say no, of the fact that it, it's your job 
to be nice. So what do you do? How do you make this happen? And even if you're not afraid, you just don't have the skills because nobody ever taught you how to be self-assertive and a self-advocate in that way. So you just can't flip the switch in that moment and suddenly do it. Um, and so a lot of coercion is really nice. This is an important thing I wanted to mention is that um, most boys and men, I don't think, realize that they're engaging in coercion at all because to them, they're just trying to get what they want. You know, they've been taught like from babyhood up, like, you know, the world is yours, dude. You can go get what you want. Just like never let, never let down, like just go, go after it. Um, and that applies to women too, especially it applies to sex where they're taught that like, you just have to you have to go get what you want. You have to accomplish it. You have to earn it. You have to overcome all of her obstacles. You have to overcome all of her no's. Um, and the way of doing that is just a really intuitive uh, flow between all of the tactics of pleading and whining and, you know, guilting and making you feel bad and, um, you know, calling on on favors and um, diminishing it. Like, it's not a big deal. Come on, it's just, it's not a big deal. Um, and a lot of shaming, like, you know, telling her what it would mean uh, one way or the other, threatening the relationship a little bit. All of that can be done in a totally nice, comfortable kind of situation. A totally average situation, not a scary sexual assault situation. Just like hanging out with your boyfriend in high school. All of those things can happen. And even if he's a good guy, all of these things can happen. I think most good guys have absolutely no idea that, that what they're doing is coercion. And even more to the point, they have absolutely no idea how damaging it is for the women. And that's the big point is it's not damaging for them. They get what they want. They're like, you know, maybe they're kind of miffed when you really, really resist. But like, for the most part, they ask for what they want over and over and over and over and over. And then, you know, you consent and they get what they want. Great. They have a great time. Everything feels good. But you, your body, some boundaries been crossed. You had sex and didn't really get turned on because you weren't really bought in. You didn't have that heart opening. Yes. Your mouth said yes, you know, you gave him permission. That's, that's consent legally. Um, but your heart wasn't like, oh God, I want that. Like, yes, let's do that. Um, otherwise you wouldn't have had to be pressured. So one of the things I said in the Instagram story is, can you imagine a world in which there was, you weren't allowed to, or it was completely absent from the conversation to use language like please and come on and to diminish and to guilt um, and to use any of these tactics, like what would happen? I honestly believe it would heal a generation of women. I think that the generation of women coming up in that kind of a culture, let's say it was I illegal to, to say please or come on to try to get someone to do something sexually. If, if truly people understood truly what coercion was and how damaging it was and that they, they could not or should not um, try to get anybody to do anything with them, that there should be ever, never any kind of pressuring or convincing that we would change the world. That's what I think. Because so, 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 so much of the work I do with women is re-embodying after experiences that taught them that their body is, it, you don't have to say yes with your whole heart. Just yes enough is, is all that's required and nobody cares. That most of our male partners have thought that it was great and that we look back and go, oh, I feel so yucky about all of that, or like so conflicted, or so, mm, mm. Even the kind of sexual experiences that were good, there's still some part of us holding on that's like, mm. I had to be convinced to do that. And when you're convinced to do something, your heart isn't giving that full, full yes. And positive sexual experiences that are fully embodied, where you're actually in touch with your sensations, and you're actually allowed and able to connect to the pleasure and orgasm and to the feeling of how good everything is, all of that requires a wholehearted yes, not being co um, convinced or coerced. Um, and so the thing is that I think so many boys don't realize that they're doing this and that we, I don't know how to change the conversation. Um, I don't know any teenage boys, but I do believe that that there's an idea out there that if you just teach young people respect, that that's enough. And I fucking disagree. I don't think that respect is enough. The same way I don't think teaching a girl to be assertive is enough. I think you need to teach a girl to be assertive when it comes to coercion with boys. I think you need to 
teach her to be a self-advocate when it comes to being pressured in terms of sex, you also have to teach her what it feels like to actually tune into an open-hearted yes, um, to explore her body by herself so that she knows what feels good and can tell the difference between what felt good by herself and this other thing that's happening with this guy right now. Because those are things that matter. And when you don't talk about sex, you only talk about respect and assertion in general. Um, you miss this entire behind the closed doors realm of life. And it is so damaging. And when it comes to pressuring for boys, it's not just respect women. Because I know so many really good guys who respect women, who really, they stand, they believe they're really advocates for women's rights. And they also, many of them, most of their lives have been pressuring to get what they want in bed. They've been convincing. You know, they've been pleading. They've been holding out. They've been coming up with reasons why she would like it and, and negotiating. Um, and it shouldn't be like that. It just shouldn't. So there's a huge difference between teaching a boy to respect your mother, respect women, you know, um, and actually teaching him that it is not his job to pressure someone into, into sex or into anything. And that, in fact, the moment he has said please or the moment that he has said come on, he has already stepped over into coercion. And that already he has taken away the possibility that this girl or woman is going to actually be able to be embodied in her body, experiencing all that pleasure, experiencing as much of a good time as he as he's going to, as he wants to, um, that you have stripped her of that possibility the moment you say, come on, or please, or you know, just a little, or you diminish it, or you guilt her, any of those things. Convincing a girl to go further. Uh, or to try something she she wasn't originally into, like, you know, a threesome or anal or a blowjob or whatever it is, um, all of those things are incredibly damaging. And it is not respectful. Because if she's on the fence, respectful goes, let's talk about that. That's interesting. What, you know, what's on both sides of that being on the fence? Um, how are you feeling? What are you thinking? What do you want to happen um, all of that is respectful, but to go, ugh, you know, you're being stupid or silly or um, even even just totally not talking about it, just totally ignoring the issue altogether. All of these can be really disrespectful ways of convincing a woman that she's crazy, subtle gaslighting, subtle guilting. This shit is so damaging for us. And I, so I made this whole post and I just got all these women being like, yep, 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 yep. This is my sexual experience. This is my sexual history. You hit the nail on the head with this. Um, and so I guess that's all I have to say because I don't really know where to take it from here. I'm going to continue thinking about it and writing about it. But um, I'd like to hear your thoughts because how do we teach this to people that a boy's job is not to pressure and a girl's job is not to resist? We'd have to change the entire dynamic of like, you know, a girl trying to preserve her purity and um, abstinence education and this idea that men are horny, you know, hormone riddled creatures and women are, um, you know, gentle and pure and don't have those same feelings. Uh, it, we would have to change everything. And I don't know where to begin with that other than just to acknowledge that I think most guys are doing this and they have no idea that it's coercion that it's pressuring and convincing and all that, that it's coercion, sexual coercion, and that there's a side effect, that that side effect is an incredibly damaging relationship that all of us women have with our bodies because we were put in a position where we didn't have the skills to say no, to assert ourselves, or to be a self-advocate because we were never taught that we should do that out in the world. We were never taught that we can put our needs first and hurt somebody else's feelings, and that that's totally valid and fine. Um, and also that in those moments, um, we are sending ourselves a message and we are sent the message that our bodies just don't matter as much as the guy's body does or that the guy's needs matter more than our needs and that it's our job just to make him comfortable and uh, at any risk or cost or whatever and that's how we end up in these situations. So I'd love to hear your thoughts um, on where to take this and other than that, I just wanted to have made a video that's permanent and uh, put this conversation out there.